Well, welcome back. Fresh evidence that we're in brush fire season. Long Island has seen red flag warnings this past week. The high winds and dry conditions helped worsen a house fire in Copay, with flames spreading to several other homes and then jumping a canal to set brush there ablaze before it was finally brought under control. It's the type of dangerous outcome that has volunteer firefighters on edge, even as they train constantly while enlisting the aid of a tough new weapon in this battle against brush fires. This battering ram of a fire truck rolls easily through the tangled ridges of forest that ring the town of Ridge. Local volunteer firefighters now confident it will help them take on flames deep into the woods while giving them a way out should flames block the way. Those are uh, ex-military five tons that we had uh, fabricated to uh, take down trees. There. Firefighter Stephen Gray knows the danger. He was in command when a huge brush fire broke out here four years ago under similarly dry conditions. Conditions. It burned several homes, damaged fire equipment, and briefly trapped several volunteers. It was nothing I've ever seen before. I've been in the department for almost 20 years now, and that's the biggest fire that I've ever seen. Since then, more new homes have been built directly in the woods. Pick up some leaves. We'll bring it over here. Come on, you going to help me? Giselle Rivera's family moved in just two months ago, now alarmed to learn of the recent red flag warning for her new neighborhood. It just didn't cross my mind about the, the brush fires and that it would actually be this close to close to us. Here in the brush, you can see why there's a red flag alert. Leaves so dry, they're ready to crumble at the touch. And it's why the state forestry department plans to set more fires intentionally. These so-called controlled burns cut down on the amount of combustible brush that spreads brush fires quickly. The pine barrens have been burning for thousands of years, and our firefighters have learned that it's better to fight small fires than big fires. Even as these volunteers train constantly to protect their community, Giselle Rivera says she and her family are already planning an escape route. I'm definitely going to have to talk to the kids again about fire safety. While keeping a nervous eye on the woods. And here now to talk about what will be done to prepare against the threat of serious wildfires is Judy Jacobson. She's with the Central Pine Barrens Commission. And welcome to the show, Ms. Jacobson. Thank you for having me. Well, we saw the threat here. But, you know, for people who don't know what the Central Pine Barrens Commission is, explain what it is, how it got set up, and what it's supposed to do. Sure. Uh, the Central Pine Barrens Commission was created under the Long Island Pine Barrens Protection Act in 1993 by the New York State Legislature. It sort of operates like a regional land use entity in terms of oversight over um, different land use activities in the Pine Barrens. Which is a protected region because it's the right. sole source of our, our drinking water with the right. aquifer. And, and it has a lot of ecological significance also. You know, last night, uh, from when we taped the show uh, here on Friday, uh, you had a, a public meeting in which you explained uh, what the state's approach is going to be, and you asked for input. Wondering what people were telling you there and what you told them uh, is going to be done to help control this threat. Okay. Uh, last night, we actually had a public meeting on a community wildfire protection plan that the commission's involved in preparing for the Ridge Maryville Calverton area and it's in cooperation with the other public land management agencies. The, we had a good attendance from folks in the Ridge and Manorville community. How many people were there? There was about 40 people. And that's a lot. I it's thought a small was a community. good turnout. Yeah. And um, a lot of them were definitely, their primary concern was the buildup of uh, vegetation in the public lands adjacent to their homes. Now, you, I believe, probably told them there's things they can do to help in this, right? What should a homeowner do? Oh, absolutely. There's a number of programs that, uh, such as FireWise and the Ready, Set, Go program that is actually specific for what homeowners they can do themselves on their property uh, to protect their homes. Because a lot of these brush fires get set by people throwing matches out the window or maybe leaving some burning debris. It could be from a charcoal pit. Um, leaving brush that dries out in the sun in a place where it can be sparked even by sunlight. Right. So a homeowner can redu make their home more able to survive a wildfire by basically doing good property maintenance, getting those dead leaves raked up and out, cleaning out the, gut the leaves out of your gutters because you have to worry about flying embers can travel a couple of miles. So don't anything that could create a combustible path to your home Forget, you know, get that cleared away. That's right. right. And then, you know, I thought the woman uh, in our, our story there, uh, Giselle Rivera, 
uh, made a good point that, you know, I got to figure out the best way out of here. Uh, because we saw how dangerous this could be four years ago, and even more so 20 years ago with the big Pine Barrens fire. Right. Uh, and people having a hard time getting away, even firefighters getting trapped. You really should go out and identify which roads lead to, I would think, what, away from the woods, right? That's right. And also the homeowners should pre-plan, uh, which is part of the Ready, Set, Go program, um, that it teaches the homeowner what they need to do and uh, to pre-plan if something happens, um, how they would leave the area. Because these are scary fires. I mean, they move really fast. They were above the treetops four years ago, and even the firefighters who, you know, they love to get out there and, sh and take on a good fire uh, and show what they can do, made them nervous. That's right. It, they, it was a very uh, significant fire. Uh, there were evacuations, and um, there were some issues with water supply in one of the areas. Supply. And now they're bringing a portable water supply, a pool that can be inflated and filled with water so that they you see it right there. They can fill up their pumper trucks if their water supply gets cut off or they can't get to the fire hydrants, which happened last time. They even had trucks get melted uh, from the intense heat. So, you know, when the firefighters are in danger, that's when you know you're dealing with a serious threat. So one of the things that also was pointed out in our piece by uh, uh, Richard Amper, the uh, executive director for the Long Island Pine Barren Society, he's been lobbying for years for the state to do more of these controlled burns and the state has agreed to do so but there you know those have to be carried out very carefully too. explain uh, what's going to be done with controlled burns will there be more of them and where will they be done well every year I mean controlled burns have been going on for many years it's just there's a lot of very specific conditions that they can be performed under the weather is a big factor on whether or not you're able to uh, proceed and carry out a prescribed burn. Yeah, because you don't want one getting out of control, right? That's right. That's why they, every spring they try to plan to perform prescribed fires, but it really depends on the weather conditions and also if they have enough staff resources to carry it out. Yeah, they need near still wind conditions. Um, I think they told me uh, anything above five miles an hour, forget it. They prefer it to be three miles an hour or less so that there's no chance of the fire. Because it has happened in other states where these controlled or prescribed burns have gotten out of control and then spread to other properties, which is why some people are, uh, don't want you to do them at all. Is that debate uh, settled as far as going forward with controlled burns? I mean, in terms of the residents? Yeah, some people worried that they could get out of control. I think, well, the folks last night, they seemed to be in favor of them doing more prescribed fire, getting those fuels reduced next to their homes. And yeah, because what happens here is you get the brush. Explain what happens that it builds up, that it creates this carpet in the forest that really can uh, fuel the fire. Well. Because we've had so many years of suppression in the woods, you get a tremendous buildup of vegetation, um, the leaves and duff and um, dead branches and, and uh, limbs that make it a prime condition for a hazardous, hazardous uh, fuel load should a fire come through. Yeah, they demonstrated to us how the fire can outrun you. Uh, it can move, if it's got a path that is consistent and constant, can actually outrun you if you're trying to get away. And that, that is the true danger that folks face because, you know, we want to feel like we, we have a way to <laughs> stand on our own and, and escape it. Uh, Judy Jacobson with the Central Pine Barrens Commission, thank you so much for explaining how the battle against brush fires is going to be carried out and, and what homeowners can do to try to help in that battle so we all stay safe. Thank you very much. You bet.